snackers. It's laced with snack it or leave it and I am here at the food and wine classic event here at the Swan and Dolphin Resort at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida and this has been a huge bucket list event for me personally and I'm going to bring you along with some of the uh, things that we're going to eat and drink this evening. This is a separate ticketed event. It is not in a park. It is um, uh, put on by the Swan and the Dolphin Resorts here and it is kind of like a wonderful upscale dining all you care to enjoy uh, event so we will be enjoying tons this evening i don't know exactly how this video is going to work out i'm just going to show you bits and pieces of of my evening tonight um it starts it hasn't started yet um but when it starts we're gonna try some so come along you guys So I am back in the home studio and I will be talking about some of the food that I had there at the Swan and Dolphin Food and Wine Classic event. Um, and of course, at this point, the event has ended. It is only two nights, um, typically in November. Um, this year it was November 10th and 11th. We went to the opening night for it um, and by far it was fantastic. Um, it was an extra cost, like it's not in one of the theme parks, it is, um, it, it's on the causeway in between the, um, the Swan and the Dolphin Resorts, which are on Disney property, but they are ma managed by, I believe, Marriott. Um, we did not stay at these resorts, but we did go inside and look around, and um, by far the Dolphin seems to be our favorite, and um, we may just stay there one day, but but when we did um, visit, they were still setting the event up, um, and I've got photos of all of that um, that I'll interject throughout this video. And this video is going to be a little different than some of my other vacation videos, as I did a little bit of B-roll. <laughs> videos so you can see a little bit more of um, the food, the setups instead of just photos. Um, so I'll interject those throughout um, as I talk about the food. So I, although this is a food and wine event, I will not be talking about any of the uh, beverages um, just because I feel um, A, I, I want my video to be family friendly and all of the beverages were definitely 21 plus. And um, I also want to be sensitive uh, to uh, people that may be watching that um, may have a, a, a bit of a trigger uh, talking about alcoholic beverages. So I will not be talking about that. I will only be focusing on the food. Um, I will note that this event is highly centered around the alcoholic beverages. Um, just to show you, this is a little pamphlet that they gave, us, gave to us. If you can see all of those orange dots, are booths that had alcoholic beverages. All of the red dots were food. So as you can see, it was mostly beverages. <laughs> um, but if that's your jam, this might be an event you wanna try. So uh, like I mentioned, this is an extra uh, cost event. Um, it is about $185 per person extra. Um, but this has been on our bucket list for a number of years. And it's something that uh, we we highly enjoyed actually, um, and we would like to do it again in the near future. I say near future, um, it only comes once a year, so <laughs> I don't know if we'll go next year. Um, if we do, I'll definitely bring you guys along again. Um, but we liked it for a number of reasons. The food was more elevated as far as quality than what you get at the Epcot Food and Wine festival. If you didn't see that video, I'll link that in the description below. Um, and um, it was a lot less crowded. <laughs> the day we were in Epcot was incredibly crowded. And it was, I don't know, it was very hot. It was hard to want to eat as much as I wanted to eat. <laughs> um, this event only goes for about four hours in the evening where it starts cooling down. I get my appetite back <laughs> from the heat of the day and um and it was much less crowded it, it was it was really nice so you know you weren't waiting in line for anything you know maybe two or three people ahead of you grabbing a plate but um 
It was a fantastic event and beautiful. You know, they had at least two stages that we know of with a main stage with entertainment all night and then an, um, a stage farther away um, with entertainment all night. So there was dancing, there was, it was just a very fun event. We checked in early, we were allowed to check in early. Of course, we had pre-bought our tickets months ago um, as soon as they went on sale. And upon uh, registering, we got our little Food & Wine Classic um, bracelets that just, you know, that's how you, uh, they check. They don't really check these, but I mean, they're pretty easily visible if, if somebody's grabbing something without one of these, they'll know. And then they give you these little, the plastic, um, uh, little wine flutes. Um, and that is what, if you wanted to uh, enjoy a drink, you would, um, you know, pass this to whoever, whichever booth. Um, and they would, you know, they'd rinse it out for you each time and um, give you a little sample of uh, the drink. It was, as far as the drinks go, it was mostly wine. There was a little bit of beer and a, little, a few seltzers. Okay, I'm done talking about the alcohol. So um, as far as the food, um, we started with, so, <laughs> sorry, I have so much to talk about and my brain goes this way and my mouth goes, anyway. Um, so each one of the food booths is um, put on by a restaurant in within the Swan, the Dolphin, or the Swan, the new Swan Reserve Hotel. Um, and so there's a number of, of bo uh, food booths because there's a number of restaurants. So um, I will I will say the name of the restaurant first and what their um, what the dish was. I have clips of most of the food that we tried, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay, so the first one we tried, as soon as the event began, like as soon as, I believe it started at uh, five o'clock, as soon as five o'clock hit, we, we were on it. Uh, we started with the fountain, which is a, um, think of a soda shop, soda fountain type restaurant. Um, they had beef sliders, hand formed beef sliders, which were hand formed Angus beef patty, truffle aioli, smoked bacon, Roma tomato chutney. And these these were good. Um, and mind you, they're they are mass producing a lot of the food, so I always take that into account. Um, I found them to be a little dry. I did not find the truffle aioli. I do remember the Roma tomato chutney, that was very good. Um, everything else, it was okay. It was slighter. <laughs> I'm glad I started the evening off with it instead of like had that be my last thing. Um, yeah, so it, it was okay. It wasn't amazing, but at that point I was very hungry because <laughs> we had made sure to eat our lunch very, very early that day. So we were good and hungry by the time this event came because this is an, an all you care to enjoy event. You can revisit a booth as many times as you want provided they don't run out of food. Um, that goes for drinks too. Um, <laughs> you, it's not just a one and done deal. So if you try something and you really like it and you want two or three of them, you can keep coming back. <laughs> and um, you know, no need to wear a disguise. It's okay. <laughs> Um, so the second place was from Amare, which is another restaurant there. Um, this was a tomato braised lamb and beef meatball with crispy potato, saffron aioli, toasted pine nut crumble. Thank you. You're very welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. This was also really good. It was... It was a very large meatball, actually. Um, and it was kind of, so it was another hot day. So it, as large of a meatball as it was, it was kind of meat heavy for as hot as we were at this point in time because the sun was just starting to set, hadn't quite cooled off yet. Um, it, it was, the flavor was really good. It, it did not taste very lamb-like. Um, it tasted just like a, a, a rich beef flavor. Um, it was good. It wasn't my favorite, but it was still really good. <laughs> and um, 
yeah, it, I was, I kind of, I, I guess I kind of had a higher hope for this one, but there was nothing wrong with it. Um, so that's not to say that it wasn't very good. It was, it just didn't hit me quite right. So, um, so the next one was from Cabana. Um, this was a compressed late harvest watermelon. It had a uh, feta spiced labna. I probably butchered the pronunciation of that. Marinated tomatoes, frisee, and marinated feta. <laughs> and um very flavorful um so I'm, I'm not entirely sure what compressed watermelon was it was watermelon um it did look very it, i mean it, it tasted very juicy and ripe um it was kind of a unique flavor because i believe it was the the frise um or possibly even the feta it had a very stark flavor difference um to that watermelon you have something so juicy and sweet and you're kind of expecting more sweetness but then it, it kind of got cut with a savoriness it wasn't bad um, my husband did not try this it wasn't gonna be his jam anyway um i didn't get another one <laughs> i didn't need another one um but it was a great start when it was still kind of hot not super heavy it was definitely a lot lighter of a dish than the meatball. <laughs> um, kind of wish I had started with that and then eased into the meatball. <laughs> but <laughs> either way. So the next uh, restaurant is Peekaboo. And uh, they had red wine braised beef uh, with new potatoes, field mushrooms, uh, organic vegetables, and egg noodles. <laughs> just like pot roast and I I guess maybe I'm a little picky on my pot roast too because I like my pot roast <laughs> the one that I make here at home it, it did not taste like that it, it was good it it wasn't something I would order at a restaurant anyway so maybe that's why I was a little meh about it he loved it it was nice and hearty he's a meat and potatoes kind of guy anyway he likes nice hearty food um and that was right up his alley he loved it I believe it had like carrots and um I don't remember what other vegetable it had. I want to say it, I, it had carrots. At this point, I'm, I'm forgetful. But the flavor of it was okay. You know, it, there was nothing wrong with the, the dish. It just wasn't my thing. So there's that. And I know this sounds like I haven't liked anything yet. I promise. There was stuff I liked. Loved, in fact. And I got multiple dishes of. Um, we just haven't <laughs> gotten there yet. Um, so for the Garden Grove... Um, they had sautéed Atlantic salmon with celery root puree and crispy sprouts. Now, when I first started eating this dish, it was bland. I love salmon. I love salmon. It's something I would eat um, when going out. And it had a wonderful sear on it. It, it was just crispy on, on the edge of the outside and perfectly cooked on the inside. It was fantastic in that regard. But it was bland. Until I had one of those crispy sprouts. And then that is where it, all the flavor of the dish was in those crispy sprouts. I had those like the last like two bites and I was like, oh. You need a little bit of those crispy sprouts throughout the dish to really get that flavor. It was fantastic once I figured that out. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, oh, I did not write my notes down very well. I wrote notes down so, <laughs> so I wouldn't have to do this. But um, So, Todd English is a uh, famous chef and he has a restaurant there at the Swan and Dolphin called uh, Todd English's Blue Zoo. It is a seafood restaurant. So, they had... Um, charred prawns, teriyaki, which were teriyaki marinated prawns, sweet potato beignet, mushrooms, and yum yum sauce. Oh, this is very, very good. Um, and there were 
is actually a little bit of a wait for this one. Um, but I'm sure the fact that it was Todd English's uh, restaurant, I'm sure that had some weight to it. The next one I was super, super excited about. Um, I had heard so many good things about Shula's Steakhouse. Um, unfortunately, this was extremely underwhelming for me. Um, and I don't know if it was me or if it was them, but it, it sounds amazing. So from Shula's Steakhouse, it was Roasted Lintz Heritage Black Angus Beef Tenderloin. Sounds good, right? Potato puree, pearled onion, Dijon mustard, cognac sauce. <laughs> Sounds fantastic, right? It wasn't, it was not my favorite. Um, the beef, maybe, and again, I don't know if it was me or if it was the dish, and my husband kind of agreed. Um, it was a little underwhelming for as much as everybody hypes up Shula's Steakhouse. Um, it was good. The pearled onion was, I guess I prefer mine done a little more. It was still really, really crunchy. Um, so it kind of took away from the flavor of the steak. I was kind of bummed about this one, to be honest. Um, yeah. But we then came to um, a little area. It was called For the Love of Florida. And there were four booths there. Um, with um, Florida gathered uh, ingredients and such. And I came across the <laughs> butter poached bay scallops with corn puree, charred scallops, vinaigrette, radish threads, and shallot butter. I got like three or four of these <laughs> and they were tiny little scallops, but um, very, very good. And it was the, the radish actually that added this wonderful acidity to the this creamy cr like rich <laughs> dish <laughs> it was very very good um and at this point this is when i decided i i was kind of done doing my b-roll videos i kind of wanted to just enjoy the rest of the the event but um i will tell you some other things that i got there that i just don't have video for because I put my phone away. <laughs> I, I I tend to be that type of person that I like to put my phone away. And maybe I don't snap as many photos as I should. But I like living in the, the moment, in the experience. So I don't often get as many photos. My husband's really good about photos. So a lot of the photos that you've seen on our trip have been from him. <laughs> so thanks, hon. Um, so I also tried... So we tried um, from Il Molino, which is another... Um, Italian based restaurant there. Um, it was gorgonzola cheese filled Anglati Ango. It's a type of pasta. I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry, guys. Spiced pear, walnuts, nest. Why do they gotta put fancy names in everything? Anyway, it was very good. Um, <laughs> the pear had a little sweetness, the gorgonzola had a little savoriness to it. That was very good. Um, even my husband liked it and he. he said it he didn't think it was gonna be very good kimonos is a sushi bar there um they had a kimonos roll which was ahi tuna yellowtail sustain sustainable salmon and wasabi mayonnaise fantastic i got multiple but then again i love <laughs> i love sushi so <laughs> we just kind of hung around kimonos and i'd go and grab one and I'd grab another one but that's what you do right there was a new restaurant there, Rosa Mexicano. Um, this, I believe they are located in, I think it's the Dolphin. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's at the Swan. I'm getting everything mixed up now. Um, so they had signature classic guacamole. And I was so excited to try it. It was a little too spicy for my taste. I love guacamole, but I don't like a super spicy guacamole. I was kind of bummed that it was that spicy. Um, and then we, they had a couple of tacos there. Um, I only tried one. And I took one bite of it and I did not like it. And that is so not like me. But um, it was the red chili chicken. It had avocado, tomatillo, pico de gallo, queso fresco, and corn tortilla. Um, on paper, it sounded delicious. It was dry as anything. And I was like, no. <laughs> because at this point, I did not want to... Okay, so... 
Let me pause there. One little gripe I have with this event is that it's so hev heavily reliant on the alcoholic beverages. There is no non-alcoholic beverages to be found anywhere. Um, and so when I tried this taco from Rosa Mexicano and realized how dry it was, I was like, I have two options. <laughs> I can go get an alcoholic beverage, which I do not want right now. Um, or I can just try to eat this dry, dry taco and deal with it. And I, I wasn't about to do that either. So I just didn't finish it. Sorry. Um, it was just dry. <coughs> <coughs> My husband had both of them. He said they were both really good, um, but I didn't. And then we also had um, truffled marble potatoes with um, little patelli cheese, soft herbs, and shake and bake seasoning. Those were incredible. It was just a, a, a little plate of, of like, like new potatoes, like the really small ones, like cut in half, roasted, seasoned, delicious, fantastic. Um, they had a bunch of food there that I did not try, just lack of stomach space, and it was so hot still that certain things did not sound good. Like they had a creamy jalapeno mac and cheese with bacon and crab. On paper, it sounds so good, but in the heat all day, I did not want those carbs. <laughs> I did not want those heavy, heavy carbs. No, thank you. And <laughs> the rough part was <laughs> the, where it was located was around a swimming pool. And it was just like, I just want to jump in. But it's a fancy event. We can't just jump in. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's normally that hot in November in Florida. I haven't been in to Florida in November, except for this last time. It was very hot. Um, it was still hot. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Let me see. They had a bunch of... Um, so they also had pastry. They had, um, for dessert, I tried the triple chocolate cherry ring flambe. It was very good. It was, um, they actually set it on fire. They, they sprinkled like some sugar on it and um, set it on fire. So it was like on fire when I got it. Um, it was just really good. It was a very light sweetness. It wasn't very heavy. Perfect kind of dessert for all the hot heat and eating that we did like just the perfect amount of sweetness to savor or <laughs> quench the sweet tooth i guess um so another thing about this event is that the menu often changes for the food from the friday night event to the saturday night event so um there is a reason to attend both nights we only did the one it was almost it was over four hundred dollars for the two of us as it was and adding another day would have been double that <laughs> so we didn't do it this time um so there's definitely a repeatability factor as far as going both nights and they do often have um, deals and discounts for staying at either the swan or the dolphin and um, getting the tickets um, they also had like a, a pre um, a before event experience for an added cost and an after event experience for an added cost they had seminars and um other kinds of added cost things that we did not this was just our base ticket into the event and we would absolutely do it again um we definitely want to um so yeah i would love to answer any questions you guys have about the event i don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I can tell you um, more about my experience if you want. That should just cover pretty much the basics there. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. That was a lot of fun. Um, and I am excited to announce to you guys that I will have another trip coming up in March. So not too long away, we decided we loved being down there so much um, that we booked another trip to Florida. <laughs> um, this time our main focus is going to be another Epcot festival. It's going to be the, um, <laughs> I'm suddenly blanking, the um, Flower and Garden Festival, which um, usually starts in March and goes into uh, the beginning of summer. Um, different food options than the Food and Wine Festival in the fall. Um, 
neither me nor my husband have done this festival before so this will be a new experience for us and of course I'm gonna bring you guys for the food so I can't wait I think we're sitting at just over 100 days now so I'll have more of this kind of content I'm gonna do one more video on our last trip it'll be just kind of um, random other things that we ate um, and so you can look for that later this week um, and then we'll be back to our regularly scheduled snacks like I have some Mountain Dews we're gonna try and that sort of thing etc so back to the regularly scheduled thing but we have a new trip to look forward to and I can't wait to bring you guys along for more food stuff so that'll be very fun and exciting this time we're bringing a two-year-old and I don't know how that's gonna go so <laughs> um yeah maybe we're crazy I don't know but um so yeah this was a fun video. I was so excited to do this video just because we had such a fantastic time at this event and um, quite frankly, we want to do it again. But yeah, so there's that and I will see you guys at the next snack time.